Welcome to the channel everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to and when to wrap your figs for winter time and most importantly why you need to do it. Let's go. So before we talk about the how and the when, we're going to talk about the why. And this will directly relate to the type of figs you have and to the zone and the area that you live in. So there are four types of figs. We've got Capra figs, Smyrna figs, San Pedro figs, and common figs. Capra figs only have male flowers and they don't fruit. Smyrna figs have female flowers, but they need a capper fig to uh, cross-pollinate with it so that it produces fruit. And San Pedro figs kind of need both. They, they will put out a small crop that is uh, not needing pollination, but for the other crop on the newer wood on the San Pedro fig, then you will need a pollinator or a, another tree to help pollinate it. Common figs are what we have and they are the easiest to grow. Some examples are brown turkey figs or Texas Everbearing, uh, Celeste figs, Alma figs, LSU purples. Uh, there's a few more, but those are incredibly easy to grow because you do not need another fig tree for them to be pollinated and to get fruit out of them. Now, while uh, the Smyrna figs and San Pedro figs will bear fruit on old wood or last year's wood, the common figs bear fruit on new wood. They do bear some fruit on old wood and that's called a Breba crop, but it's really not a big crop and you only get a few, it's towards the beginning of the season or it's the first fruits that actually come out of the tree. But off the new wood growth, you get all of your fruit on that new wood. So why am I telling you all this? Well, if you live in a zone where your fig tree dies back every year to the ground and you're waiting for that new growth to come up out of the ground, uh, you may not get any fruit harvest at all because it hasn't had time to actually fruit out because it's putting all of its energy into growing that new wood and by the time your fall hits, no fruit. So protecting your fig tree during the winter, especially in the, those upper zones, five, six, uh, up into four, five, six, you need really to insulate the tree from frost and freeze. You wanna do that so you can get a jump start in the spring to get that fig tree growing properly and to get your fruit by the time it shuts down and goes dormant in the late fall, early winter. So fig tree roots are incredibly hardy. They will take a freeze down to about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can actually grow figs in a lot of different places. However, if you're gonna get fruit, that's the question because it takes so long for those roots in the springtime to kind of thaw out and get their growth going that you probably won't get your fruit if you're in one of the upper zones. You have to protect your tree in the fall and overwinter it with protection. So let's talk about what you need for the project. You're gonna need some natural burlap. Potentially, you will need some painter's plastic or some sort of uh, plastic sheeting tarp. Maybe some insulative bubble wrap, which is very nice to have. You're gonna need something to prune with, and of course, we always clean our pruners before we touch another tree. That's important. So something to prune with, we've got our silky saw and our pruners, and also something to tie with. We've got some of these garden twist ties here that we love, and also some wire. So our most important first step is we have to wait until the fig tree is dormant. And there, you haven't had a freeze yet, but it's dropped all of its leaves and it's gone dormant for the winter time. Now this is a great time to prune out any dead or old or diseased dying wood from your fig tree. You can see we've got the original stalk here in the center that's died off. Everything else has come up from the roots. Of course, just prune it off and make sure you always clean your pruners off between different trees and species. <sighs> One thing I forgot to mention they have on hand too is some jute twine. Jute twine is to tie the fig tree trunks back into themselves, into a smaller bundle here. You can bend these back and uh, just be gentle with them. They'll bend fairly far. That jute twine is not gonna be as abrasive as some other things on the wood.
So now that we've got our fig tree trunks tied up in a nice neat bundle here, it's time to wrap it with the burlap. We're gonna wrap it around about three or four times. Then we will secure that burlap with our wire or our wired twist tie here. These are the best things to have for cutting stuff like this on your homestead, Cutco, indestructible. So there's two really important things that I did when wrapping this with the burlap, and this also applies to the other layers that you'll put around your fig tree. And that is that I've left a little bit of space here at the top for moisture and uh, air to get out of the top of this, kind of like a chimney. Around the bottom, it's completely tucked down to the ground. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push back any mulch or anything we have around the base of the burlap and that is going to help moisture uh, stop moisture from coming in toward the bottom now the reason i told you that you want to wait until these are dormant and you want to wrap them a certain way is because of moisture because if moisture builds up inside of this uh, enclosure for your figs you're going to have a problem you're going to have a problem with mold and mildew and that's going to really really harm your tree if not kill it outright over the course of the winter. So for those of you in the more northern zones, it's time to add your other insulation around the burlap. So you saw me push the dirt or mulch against the burlap. Don't do that yet if you have other layers to add. Add your bubble wrap, add another layer of insulation, whatever it may be, and then add your plastic to it. And essentially what you're gonna do is just wrap it around like the burlap and tie it off like you saw me do with that burlap layer. Now it's incredibly important not to trap that moisture in there. So you don't want a lot of air, cold air coming in up from the bottom. You just wanna leave that vent up at the top for that moisture to evaporate up and through the top. Don't make it too big. I know a lot of people place buckets on the top, but you can take a couple of these uh, ends of these branches freezing off in the winter. That's no big deal. What you want is the plant to survive and most of the trunks to survive so that you get that fruit. So don't worry about placing that bucket on there because I think it defeats the purpose of going through all this trouble to think about mold and mildew and make that vent at the top and then place a bucket on the top. That's kind of silly. So do not do that. So remember, just a little bit of care in the fall, especially in the northern zones, and you're gonna have a huge jump start to getting fruit for or off your fig tree for next year. Now go check out these videos right here, which shows you all of our information on orchard care and gardening. Have a great day. We love you. See you on the next video. Bye.